Hello and welcome back to another episode of Teardown Tuesday. Today we're going to be taking a look at this hermetic compressor. And when we talk about a compressor being a hermetic or a semi-hermetic, really what we're talking about is being sealed from outside air. So the fact that this is a fully welded enclosure tells you already that we're going to have to cut it apart. But this is a hermetic compressor because it's all entirely encapsulated. Even the motor is inside of this welded enclosure. So when we talk about what this is, the, the first thing that you notice here is it's heavy. We've got some details on the label here. You can see right away voltage, 115 to 127, 60 hertz. LRA is our locked rotor amp. So if this were seized entirely, we could expect it to pull about 28 half amps. It's thermally protected, and we can see it's set up for R134A. Beyond that, we would have to understand the structure of the coating here to understand what the compressor was set up for, what temperature ranges it needed to operate in, how much refrigerant it pumped. When we look at the outside of it, this particular one is new. It has never been installed. You can see it's still got plugs in the, the process tubes here. But it looks like there was some shipping damage here at some point because we've got a big dent, we've got a bent bracket, and we've got some smashed suction lines. You can see on the label it does tell us which side is our suction side. And it's important to remember that compressors operate on vapor. We pull cold vapor in on the suction side, we push hot vapor out on the outlet side. That hot vapor then goes through a condenser to pull more heat out of it and return it back to a high pressure liquid. So we have a high pressure hot vapor outlet, we have a low pressure vapor inlet. When we talk about how these get damaged, one of the easiest ways to damage a compressor is to feed liquid into the suction side. So before we go through opening this up, let's take a look at the outside features. You can see the, the mounting pads here on the bottom. Normally this would be sitting on some isolators, springs or rubber mounts. We have some pins to hold it in place. And then up here, we've got the electrical components. So let's open this up real quick, take a look at what we've got. Alright, so now with that opened up, you can see our components here, start components. We've got our relay here, and we've got our capacitor here, and then this looks like thermal overload. This will be probably like a bimetal that, uh, that trips on thermal overload would be my guess, because it does say thermally protected on the label, so I believe that's what this is. These relays are interesting, and I think we may come back and do a teardown separately on just start components and go through those as their own episode. So we'll set that off to the side for now. So you can see we have three terminals for our electrical components. We have a common, a start, and a run. And you can see those are labeled on the cover. Common, start, run. You could also use your meter and check resistance between these three terminals. And using the, the resistances of the windings inside, you could determine which one was which based on that. What we really want to see is what's inside of here. So I'm going to bend these out of the way and then I'm going to take it over to the workbench and do some cutting on it. And then we'll see what the mechanical mechanisms look like inside. Alright, so we have, I've just finished cutting through the lid here with a cutoff wheel. I have not even opened it up yet. I don't know what we're going to find inside it or how much damage I caused cutting it this way. But here is the big reveal. All right, so you notice the inside of it. We've got a nice oil sheen from it rattling around. It was under a vacuum. When I pulled out the cap over here, it pulled air in. Looks like I nicked some of the motor housing and, and one of the suction tubes, maybe. Yeah. 
Yeah, so interesting setup right away here. You can see the motor windings down inside here, and the motor windings rotate this uh, eccentric, which then moves this piston up and down. But I would like to lift the motor out of there. You can see the motor again has its own spring isolators inside. Alright, so you can see the spring isolators down inside here. These are just little tiny springs and you can see the oil that our compressor would run with. The electrical terminals passing through the, the shell. But you can really see the suction lines. They're just pulling right into this open space. The compressor itself over here is going to have an inlet port. Looks like it's drawing its inlet here. It pulls that up through. We compress the vapor and then push that vapor out through this process line here to our hot vapor side. Now the oiling system in a compressor is interesting. So you see that the oil sits down on the bottom and there's not really very much of it. But what happens is the motor itself has this hole in it. And inside this hole, it's very hard to see, but there's a very small piece of metal that, that is sort of like a screw. And as this motor rotates, it's pulling that oil up. Let's see if you can, you can just barely see it there. It's pulling that oil up and throwing it out the top. And it just distributes that oil around the inside that way. So let's get this bent out of the way. It is interesting, this does not want to rotate, so I'm not sure what we've run into here. It may actually have, have damage. I think we're fighting with the valving. You can hear the valving opening and closing there. Being a new compressor, it's pretty tight. So let's get the valve cover open here. Looks like what they're trying to do here is prevent liquid from getting back into the inlet and this, this whole thing creates kind of a trap like they're trying to use this as a way to prevent liquid slugging. Yeah so this thing just has a little trap shape to it that makes the, the vapor coming back yeah, that's exactly what they're doing, is they're using it as a little trap. It's got a little drain hole in the bottom of it, too. They're trying to make sure that you're not pulling liquid in on this. And the reason that's so critical is our valving here. And this is our valve plate. We can pop this loose. You can see there's an oil film on it. And the valving in a compressor is really, really critical. If this valving gets damaged, or it wears out or it cracks, this is one of the main failure points on a compressor. The motor still runs, the compressor still kicks on, but it's not able to effectively pump anymore if the valving gets damaged. So our valving here, you can see we've got a sort of a spring steel valve that just has a lot of flex to it, and it sits against one port and then the other port in our valve plate has a valve going in the opposite direction. And we have two real phases of movement here. We have a suction phase where the piston is dropping down and it's pulling in. So the, the suction phase would be this valve, the larger valve. And then as the, the piston reaches the bottom of its stroke and starts coming up again, it's going to close this valve against the plate, seal, and it's going to start pushing the compressed vapor up through this smaller valve. So this would be our outlet. Now when we looked at our valve cover, you can see the outlet area is this space. The inlet space 
was this area. So our outlet space lines up on top of two ports here. We got this port and that port. So this would be one of our outlets. And it looks like our other outlet was piloted, but they didn't drill it. So it would have been possible to machine this in a different way to have the outlet on the other side. So our vapor outlet drops down through and goes through our tubing assembly here. So we've got some fasteners here that are holding the entire motor clamshell together. Let's go ahead and get those out and then we'll see what we can do. Well, so now with the winding off, you can see the, the core of the motor here, and it, I'm not sure what happened here. It almost looks like it like it really got stuck and gouged the, the sides of the, the winding assembly. But we can see how this piston works now. So as the motor turns, this piston moves up and down. And you can see it there. So this would be the pumping action, this piston moving up and down. So we're turning that rotary motion into that pumping action. Now remember, this is mounted vertically when it's operating, so that oil would be pumping up and spraying out of the top up here as it's running. On our motor side, you can see the internal connection for our comma and our start and our run going to the, the windings of the motor. There's no internal thermal protection, so the electrical thermal protection is on the, on the outside there. So as far as the, the principles we're using in this object, we're, we're running a motor, right? So we're dealing with electromagnetic fields. We're taking that rotary motion and turning it into pumping motion. As far as mechanicals, it's pretty straightforward. The valve plate is really the core of this system, being able to control that vapor as it's being pulled in and then pushed back out under pressure. And really, if you think about it, what we're doing here is we're adding energy to the system. As far as how this fails, Mechanically, looking at, at the mechanical systems here, internal to the compressor, the, the biggest one is going to be just wearing out in ter terms of mechanical movements. The, the valving plates here are made out of spring steel and they do last a long time, the actual valves themselves, but they will eventually cycle enough times that they crack through. So even if this thing is perfectly maintained, it never slugs liquid and it, it always has a a pretty easy life. There's a limited number of times this can flex before it's going to crack and fail. And it's a it's a high number, but it's possible to reach that. So wearing out the valves is one way to have a compressor fail. Mechanically, we have bearings in here. We've got oil down on the bottom. It's it's possible for this oil to become contaminated through a, a system failure, or to become acidic and start to etch and eat things. And as that happens, it's going to tear up the, the bearing surfaces that we rely on here for precision movement. That's another way that we can have a, a failure occur. We can also run into that same acidic oil beginning to etch the enamel on the windings. And if that happens, the windings will short. We can have a burnout, which really just contaminates everything, right? If we have an electrical fault in here and it starts arcing, that arcing is going to generate uh, an electrical plasma that's going to start to disintegrate the refrigerant, disintegrate the oil, and create a, a pretty big mess. There's plenty more to talk about with refrigeration compressors, but I think this at least gives you a good idea of what's going on inside this thing. And we'll do another episode specifically focused on the electricals of the, the compressor, so the external the capacitors and the relay, and we'll tear those apart and go through those separately. I think that'll do it for now. Thanks for watching. Hi folks, my name is Jack Kell and I'm a senior technical trainer for SmartCare. The video you've just watched is part of a larger series of technical training videos we make available to our technicians at SmartCare. If you found this interesting and you'd like to see more, please subscribe. I'll be releasing a new component teardown video every Tuesday in 2022. 
If you're already a smart care technician and you have a part that you'd like to see me tear down, please reach out to me internally for shipping instructions. If you're not a smart care technician, but you or someone you know would like to learn more about a career as a service technician specializing in commercial restaurant equipment, please check out our open positions at www.smartcaresolutions.com forward slash careers. Thanks for watching.